history of 20th century American art is the story of an extraordinary group of women who helped shape contemporary art as we know it today. Some of them were artists, all of them were patrons, and all of them were driven by a kind of idealism of modern art and how modernity could help shape and enrich contemporary art and society. Emily Fisher Landau is very much part of this rich and wonderful tradition. Women didn't get the vote in America till 1920. And so there was a huge energy among women that were looking for a kind of freedom. They were challenging expectations. They were subverting tradition. In 1903, Gertrude Stein moves to Paris with her partner, Alice Pitoklas, and they begin the story of modernity in the United States. She not only bought artists' work, but she also was part of their community. Patronage isn't simply about a person buying rich paintings. It's about support of a community and a creative moment. In 1913, the Armory Show opened, an exhibition that included the work of 300 avant-garde artists from Europe and from America, 50 of whom were women. And it could be said to be the first major exhibition of modern art in the United States. 88% of the funding for the Armory show came from women, such as Catherine Dreyer, who was an artist included in the exhibition. She, along with her friend Marcel Duchamp, started the Société Anonyme, an avant-garde museum, which was, in a sense, the first iteration of a museum of modern art in New York. Gertrude Vanderbilt Whitney, who was also an artist included in the Armory, became the founder of the Whitney Museum. In 1929, Lily Bliss, Abby Aldrich Rockefeller, and Mary Quinn Sullivan, women who were deeply involved in their community and committed to modernity, found the Museum of Modern Art, a museum that would be exclusively devoted to modern art. The Armory Show was a sort of precursor to the explosion in modern museums that opened in New York in the forthcoming decades. In 1927, Baroness Hilary Bay came from Germany to live in New York. She was very interested in artists who were exploring abstraction from a spiritualist point of view, such as Kandinsky. When she first arrived, she was commissioned to paint the portrait of Solomon R. Guggenheim. They became friends, and it was Hilary Bay who encouraged Solomon R. Guggenheim to open a Museum of Modern Art, of which she was its first director. Solomon Guggenheim had a niece, Peggy, who was instrumental in shaping the course of 20th century art. She moved to London in 1938, where she opened her first gallery, the Guggenheim Jeune. She moved to New York at the beginning of World War II, where she opened a gallery called The Art of This Century. She staged two major exhibitions of more than 30 women artists from 16 countries. Leonora Carrington, Dorothea Tanning, Frida Kahlo, it's a checklist of some of the most original and vital artists working at the time. Commercial galleries were also really an important part of the developing modern art scene in New York. In 1926, Edith Halpert opened the first gallery exclusively dedicated to modern art called the Downtown Gallery in Greenwich Village. In 1946, Betty Parsons opened her legendary gallery in 1962, Liana Sonnebend opened her gallery in Paris where she was focusing on pop art. All of the women who shaped art in the 20th century in the United States were part of this ecosystem. It wasn't just that they were signing checks and then retreating to their ivory towers. They were deeply embedded in the communities that make art possible. In the late 1960s, a new patron came on the scene, Emily Fisher Landau. She was to build on the legacy of so many of these women who had come before her. She was passionate and intuitive about art, and she was also passionate about the educational and inspirational aspects of modern art. In 1968, Emily Fisher Landau had begun collecting. She had bought an Alexander called Mobile, which she actually carried home herself and put above the bath. She bought a very important work by Pablo Picasso from 1932, a beautiful, vibrant portrait. Building on the legacy of women such as Gertrude Stein, she held salons, she visited studios, she became deeply invested in the artists' work and their lives. Andy Warhol painted her twice, 
she was dear friends with Jasper Johns. She spent much time in the studio of Ed Ruscha. In 1980, with the passing of her husband, she began to focus on the work of emerging artists in America, such as Rodney Graham, Glenn Ligon, and Mark Tanzi. In 1991, she opened the Fisher Landau Center for Art in Queens. Her Center for Art ran for 28 years, and it also was a focus for her belief in art education. For 40 years, she worked for the Whitney Museum of Art as a trustee, and in 2010, she donated 400 works to the museum. Emily Fisher Landau believed in the power of art to teach, and her museum was free and open to the public. Looking at art wasn't just about pleasure. It was always about keeping an open mind and learning more about the culture that you lived in. It's one thing to be the most famous artist in the world, but how about the greatest of all time? This is the level of Picasso's ambition in 1932. Femme à la Monde is the Fisher Landau Picasso. It's a beautiful image from this critical moment in Picasso's long practice. For me, it's both a painting profoundly rooted in its moment and also one for all time. Marie-Thérèse, Picasso's young lover, is presented as an enthroned Madonna, and the electric blue of this backdrop recalls the lapis lazuli, the richest of all pigments from Renaissance masterpieces by Botticelli and Raphael and Leonardo. It's almost as if Marie-Thérèse has been recast as a, a modern Mona Lisa, positioning her both at the center of Picasso's own personal cosmos, but also within a long and storied art history. Very unusually, she's shown wearing a watch. But why? Well, one answer would be that the theme of vanitas, the idea that beauty is transitory, that beauty will inevitably die, is a central one throughout Picasso's work. But perhaps the most important function of the watch is that it locates us very specifically in one frozen moment of time. It's Wednesday, the 17th of August, 1932, and it's 4.40 in the afternoon. Picasso has just returned from his first ever retrospective exhibition in Paris. This is a stolen moment. While they've been together for over five years, Picasso's relationship with Marie-Thérèse remains clandestine and hidden at this point. In 1932, finally, she's revealed to the world. Picasso's 1932 exhibition is really the pivotal moment within his career. While she is not explicitly acknowledged, this exhibition is where Marie-Thérèse is revealed to the world looking down from the walls in a suite of truly extraordinary paintings. With this show, he is painting for history, for posterity, for his legacy, for the museums. He's painting forevermore. Femme à la Monde captures this creative climax exquisitely. Within this legendary series, the Fisher Landau Picasso is perhaps the finest work one could ever hope to own. Never is Marie-Thérèse more majestic. She's Picasso's everything. She's the moon, she's the sun, she's literally stopped time. Look at these vibrant primary pigments, the way these sensuous brushstrokes caress the surface of the canvas. This is a work that's erotic, it's succulent, and it reflects Picasso's absolute obsession. At the center of the composition here, we can see him quoting his great rival, Henri Matisse. Matisse's 1931 retrospective, in actual fact, had been the spur that made Picasso, in a show of bravado, organize his own show the following year. At the heart of the composition, we have this green and this grid, which are a clear reference to Matisse and the rich and complex dialogue between the two artists. Just as Femme à la Monde sits at the center of Picasso's production, it also gives a center to the Emily Fisher Landau collection. 
Fittingly, this is one of the first paintings that she ever acquired, and the many themes we find across the works, form and color, abstraction, figuration, dream and reality, they're all rooted within this one magical image. Ed Ruscha is the paragon of California cool, and by extension, Americana. It's like he created this language, this visual language, sui generis. Like, it, it came out of nowhere. It's pure invention, and it's so singularly him. He was one of the first great LA artists. Ed Ruscha's Securing the Last Letter from 1964 is one of the distinct highlights of the Emily Fisher Landau collection, which we're privileged to be offering here at Sotheby's. This painting is a perfect example of Ruscha's early text works when he really first discovered and inaugurated this very unique visual language of focusing on text in painting. When you look at this work, you see a word. You see the word boss. This word is timeless. Boss has meaning all the time. For me, it's very ahistorical, and it feels just as fresh and relevant today as it would have then. When I think about this word, though, it really excites me that it comes from a female collector, because I think there's a stereotype of a boss. And just by owning this painting, Emily Fisher Landau subverted that stereotype. When you look at this work, you have this incredible blend of painterliness with modern typography and iconography. And a lot of that is conveyed through the complexity of that clamp on the last letter. That clamp really brings home that this is not just a word, that this is a visual pun, that this has body and shape to it, that he is painting in a really artful and carefully constructed way. Ruscha is one of several artists who Emily Fisher Landau really loved and collected in depth. So this work isn't just emblematic of his great work, it's also emblematic of her understanding of the greatness of certain artists and being able to choose one of the best possible examples. Agnes Martin takes a key concept in art history and she twists it and she redefines it for us. This work is a form of meditation, an object that represents time and process, and all of those things combined are a reflection, quite simply, of life. This is Agnes Martin's Greystone II from 1961. And when you think about 1961 as a year, it was a loud, bold moment in the art world. You think of Andy Warhol's Superman, Roy Lichtenstein's Look Mickey, or you think about in Europe, Lucio Fontana, you know, slashing into canvases. In the face of all this really loud, bold art, Agnes Martin creates something that is defiantly quiet, defiantly calm in a sense. And she's really going back and adopting the grid, which the Bauhaus movement had brought into fine art. And she takes this grid, which is something that on one hand is so structured, and she turns it into something that is really uniquely her own. She makes it something that is soft, something that is fragile. The Emily Fisher Landau collection is a web. From any one place within that web, you can draw lines and threads to almost every single other work. 
And the most, I think, obvious line that you're gonna draw is to the work of Piet Mondrian. And there's a similarity there, of course, because of the grid and the geometry and the structure of these canvases, but also because both of these artists, their interests were ultimately rooted in life and specifically nature. Agnes Martin talks about, with her early grids, kind of getting to that point because she's thinking about the forest, she's thinking about the trees. And trees and flowers were something that featured first in Mondrian's work until he distilled and distilled and distilled those colors and forms into the more austere abstractions that we know today. Ellsworth Kelly's work is really another point on this web which makes sense partly because the two artists were sharing studio space at the time down in Coenties Slip, which had beautiful views over the East River. So you can imagine that both artists were really inspired by their watery location. And like Agnes Martin, Ellsworth Kelly was creating these simplified, sinuous abstraction using simple colors and simple forms. Looking at Martin's Greystone too, for me is really the feeling of looking at the surface of a lake. There's something incredibly contemplative about it. I imagine that Martin wanted to create this effect, which she does so successfully, of almost looking at like grains of sand falling out of an hourglass. There's a real sense of process and time. Greystone too is further distinguished because Martin's using gold leaf in it. And gold leaf as a material is celebrated as one that's iconic within art history, relating back to Italian pre-Renaissance paintings, 16th and century Japanese screens, and more recently, the spectacular canvases of Gustav Klimt. It's a material that in Martin's hands becomes something wholly different. It's a material that I think she chose because it really communicates joy, but there is a boldness to gold as a material. It's the material of icons in a way, which probably Emily related to when she was looking at this painting because ultimately her collection is one of iconic pieces. When I'm standing in front of flags and looking at this painting, as with so many of John's works, it makes me think about the meaning of image and the meaning that we associate with images inherently, which I think John's is not only pointing out but inverting in these paintings and asking us to really think about critically. Within art history, there is before John's and there is after John's, and nowhere is that radical shift more apparent than in his flags. This is Jasper John's flags from 1986. What we see here is a doubled and inverted American flag. But the more we look, the more we see, from layers of pigment that are built up to create this almost sculptural depth, to hints of green hidden between the red, white, and blue. This really is a painting that encourages and rewards close looking. John's has been working for decades, and across his entire body of work, we see him working through this concept again and again, things the mind already knows. But the flags are absolutely the purest embodiment of that idea and of that motive that has driven his entire legendary career. While the flags are maybe John's most iconic motif, they are actually incredibly rare. The artist painted only 26 flags on canvas over the course of his practice to date, and over half of these are already in museum collections. It was in paintings like Flags that, within the last century, John's completely redefined the way that we think about art and painting, what a painting can and should be. Emily Fisher Landau acquired Flags directly from Leo Castelli Gallery the year after it was made, after meeting and even visiting John several times on her weekly trips to downtown artist galleries and studios in Soho. I think the fact that Emily Fisher Landau actually knew John's and visited his studio is truly extraordinary. It's not something you see in a lot of collections that someone has not only this impeccable taste and eye for quality, but also a desire to know these artists on a personal level. 
It's really central to her legacy. I think this painting speaks obviously to the incredible quality of her collection, to this real commitment and understanding of American post-war painting, and not only really beautiful works, but also works with incredible conceptual weight, such as Boucher's Boss, the Rothko Seagram mural. These are not only masterpieces, but works that change the way we think about art. The reason John's flags are so iconic in art history and are in every textbook you open are because they're the ultimate embodiment of what he's trying to do, which is ask us to look at the images around us. And I really think he does that best in his flags. A masterpiece of American post-war painting, one of several in this extraordinary collection. Flags is a testament to Emily Fisher Landau's intuitive eye, unerring taste, and really enduring legacy of collecting and art patronage. One of the greatest privileges of dining with Pierre Chen is his curiosity. He's a real host, like with capital H. Like he's someone that if you have to name someone that would be the perfect host, that could be that guy. He's sharing an insight and a joy that he has and imparting it to you. The way that Tansy positions himself here almost as this larger than life figure. You feel not only engulfed by the entirety of the picture, but you feel almost small before Tansy's own, own power as a painter. In the painting, Tansy essentially balances his reverence for the history of art with a sacrilege, with, with a challenge towards an entire history of art making that he stands facing in the present day. This is a painting that, through Tansy putting himself into the position of this grand painter effacing Michelangelo's The Last Judgment, he's battling this very question of how does a contemporary painter wrestle or grapple with an entire generation of our history while still making something new for the future. I see the painting in a way as a self-portrait. Here you have Tansy himself climbing this ladder up to face Michelangelo's Last Judgment, and not only painting out the Last Judgment, but Tansy here is even painting himself out. You see the roller, which is a vandalizing The Last Judgment. It's also painting out self-reflexively Tansy's own shadow. This is a painting that when you walk in front of it, it has a towering presence. You know, you feel engulfed in it, almost as you do when you walk into the Sistine Chapel and look up at Michelangelo's incredible Last Judgment. But of course, Tansy strips it all away in his characteristic monochrome red palette. Triumph Over Mastery, simply put, is one of, if not the artist's most important painting, and really for a long time has represented not only the very core of what Tansy stands for, but essentially an entire summary of his practice. Mark Tansy was a pivotal artist for Emily Fisher Landau. She collected his work in depth and was able to assemble one of the greatest and most significant private collections of his work. Mark Tansy was one of the most beloved artists by Fisher Landau herself. What's interesting about Tansy and Emily Fisher Landau's relationship with Tansy is it really brings to the fore this collector's ability to look to the most urgent and important artists of her time. And Mark Tansy was one of those artists. Thank you.
as collectors become even more selective about the apogee or the kind of core central tenets of Tornby's work, I think it is the blackboards which have distinguished themselves time and again as the most unique pictures of all. So today I'm here to introduce Cy Twombly's untitled painting of 1968, a really prime example of Twombly's best paintings, the Blackboard series of pictures, which were first exhibited in New York. In 1964, Twombly had an exhibition in Leo Castelli's gallery, which was critically a great lack of success, ultimately based on the fact that New York was being overrun by the success of pop art and then subsequently minimalism. So it was a completely different aesthetic language. But by 1968, with the Blackboard series, suddenly the language of painting was completely reinvented and it really showed the kind of the vigor and the artistic kind of intellectual capacity that Twombly had at his fingertips. I think what Emily Fisher Lando really was primarily concerned with was having major examples by all of the post-war American greats, whether it be Agnes Martin or whether it be Ed Ruscha, indeed Robert Rauschenberg or indeed Twombly. And I think the very specific choice, not only this picture is one of the greatest examples of the Blackboard series, which are clearly the apogee of Twombly's kind of painterly concerns at this period, but also the fact that it has the most distinct provenance. The only owner prior to Emily of this picture was of course the artist Robert Rauschenberg, who not only was an artist that featured in her collection, but equally an artist who is, you know, describably well closely linked with Twombly himself. I think this painting ultimately is a kind of complete tour de force of all of the blackboard paintings, which ultimately utilize housebound paints together with a mixture of kind of chalk. You're really looking for the kind of the great abstract gesture in these pictures, and there are very, very few, indeed only four, that are known to have this more sort of harp-like motif in the painting. And arguably, I think this is the greatest of all of them. But actually, amongst the heart shaped chalk lines, you see so many different hues, so much different expression of paint and application of paint, different hues of greys or blue or kind of metallic qualities and colorings as well. But on a scale at a meter 72 by 2 meters 16, which equally is completely breathtaking. And the fact that we've got a painting here, which has never appeared on the market before, and before Emily only had one owner, there's such a close relationship, not only with the provenance, but equally in terms of the quality of the painting, that this is something which to me is such an unmissable opportunity.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to Sotheby's here in New York. My name is Oliver Barker, and I will be your auctioneer for this evening's sale. Tonight, we are privileged to open the first of our November marquee sales with the distinguished collection of Emily Fisher Landau, whose bold vision helped shape the artistic landscape of New York City. One of the greatest patrons of her generation, Emily Fisher Landau was a trailblazing female collector alongside the likes of Peggy Guggenheim, Dominic de Menil, and Gertrude Stein. A steadfast supporter of young and emerging artists, she was also deeply involved with many leading institutions, not least the Whitney Museum of American Art, where she played a transformative role, and to whom she was so generously donated nearly 400 works. Tonight's sale will chart the story of her fascinating personal collecting journey through 31 exceptional works, each of which will make its auction debut this evening. From Alexander Calder and Joseph Albers to Georgia O'Keeffe and Agnes Martin, through to Jasper Johns, and Andy Warhol. At the center of it all, of course, is the outstanding Pablo Picasso Femme à la Montre, an absolute tour de force from his 1932 Year of Wonders and a masterpiece by every measure. Full of confidence, intensely vibrant, and brilliantly composed, this exceptional painting hung in pride of place over Emily Fisher Landau's mantelpiece. Tonight, it will find a new home. As everyone who knew Emily Fisher Landau has recognized, her passion for art and for artists was boundless and she was a collector of the highest order, guided by one unwavering principle. If a person is a true collector, she said, nothing will stand in their way to get what they want. And so in that spirit, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin tonight's auction, and we start with a few housekeeping notes. Everything is sold, uh, is sold under the authenticity guarantee and on an as-is basis. Buyer's premium and overhead premium will be added to the hammer price of each lot offered, and applicable sales tax will be due on the aggregate of the three figures as part of the total purchase price payable. Please refer to the online sale catalog for further information regarding lots with guarantees and irrevocable bids. Please also refer to our conditions of business for our full terms of sale. And with that, let's open the proceedings with lot number one, the Joseph Albers, the homage to the square, the yellow residence, of course, an artist whose work sparked the beginning of Elmi Fisher Landau's collecting journey. Acquired in 1968, this work has remained in her collection for more than 50 years. And here it is showing for you the wonderful work from 1957, the Olam Masonite. And I'm going to start the bidding here at $1 million. So $1 million, $1 million, one, one million two hundred thousand. Thank you, sir. It's your bid at $1 million. It's in the room at $1 million. Gentlemen here at $1 million. Your bid, sir, to start us off at $1 million. Gentlemen in the room here at $1 million. And it's against you here. You bidding? $1 million. Against you, sir. $1 million three now. With Brad Bent up on the telephone at $1,300,000. I've got the bid here at $1,300,000. It's with Brad on my left, sir. And it gets you here at $1,300,000. Want to come in again at $1,300,000. It's here with Brad at $1,300,000. Is that a bid, sir? At $1,300,000. Still with you, Brad, at one million three, And selling at $1,300,000. With you, sir, at $1,300,000. And it gets you in the room at $1,300,000. Come in, Julian, at $1,300,000. At $1,300,000. It's still with you, Brad, and against the room here, the first lot. I'm selling it to you, sir, at $1,300,000. It's here on my left at $1,300,000, $1,400,000. It's bid online. Thank you, at $1,400,000. With the online bid at Sotheby's.com at $1,400,000. Against you, Brad, against you in the room here. one million five is bid and against you online now at $1,500,000. It's against you too, sir, here at $1,500,000. At $1,500,000. And still with Brad, against the online bidder at $1,500,000. I can sell, of course, at $1,500,000. Still with you, Brad. It's your telephone bid at one million five. Want to come in again online at one million five hundred thousand? Thank you, Brad, for the Albers lot number one, the wonderful fifty-seven picture, the yellow masonite picture, and fair warning at one million five hundred thousand. Thank you, Brad. It's yours here, and against the online bid, I'm going to sell. Fair warning now at one million five. The hammer is up, Brad. It's your lot, first lot. Greg, come in at one million five. At one million five, still on this side. I'm waiting for your bid, sir. One million five hundred thousand dollars. Here it is at one million five. At one million five hundred thousand. Any more? One five. At one million five hundred thousand. You bidding, sir? At one million five hundred thousand. It's against you here. It's still with Brad and selling this time. Thank you so much. At one million five hundred thousand dollars. Battle number twenty-three. Thank you, Brad. At one million five hundred thousand. And lot number two, ladies and gentlemen, is of course the pink tulip, the abstraction number seventy-seven tulip. By Georgia O'Keeffe, an artist Mrs. Fisher Landau championed over decades, visiting her regularly in New Mexico, where she acquired this wonderful work directly from the artist in 1985, the first of two works this evening by Georgia O'Keeffe. And I'm going to start the bidding here 
at two million five hundred thousand dollars, at two million five hundred thousand, two million six hundred thousand. Thank you, sir. Two million six, two million seven hundred thousand. It's in another place. At two million seven, say eight, sir. At two million eight hundred thousand. It's on the aisle. At two million eight. Two million nine hundred thousand is bid. Thank you, madam. At two million nine, say three. At two million nine. It's ahead of me in the room here. At two million nine hundred thousand. Three million dollars is bid now. Well, Michael McCauley, it's in a new place. Three million two hundred thousand. It's back in the room again and against you, Mike, and against you, sir, as well. At three million two hundred thousand. It's here at three million two. Let's say four. At three million two hundred thousand dollars. In the room again at three million two hundred thousand. Ladies bid. At three million two hundred thousand. Thank you, madam. It's yours at three million two hundred thousand. And looking for three million four, sir, from you or from Mike. At three million two hundred thousand. Three million two hundred and fifty thousand. It's in a new place now. Gentlemen, it's bid in the second aisle. Three three is bid. Say fifty. Three three fifty. Is that a bid? Three three fifty. Thank you. Three four. Fifty. Three million five. Fifty. Three million six. Three million six fifty. Thank you, sir. Three million seven. Three seven fifty. Three million eight. Three eight fifty. Three million nine. Nine fifty. Four million. Can you say one, sir? Four million and fifty. Thank you. Four million one. Four million one fifty. Four million two. Four million two fifty. Four million three now. Four million three fifty. Four million four. Four million five. Thank you, sir. At four million five. Try six. Four million six hundred thousand. Four six. Four million six fifty. Four million seven. Thank you. Four million seven hundred thousand is bid. It's in the room here at four million seven against you, sir. At four million seven. There it is. At four million seven hundred thousand. You out. At four million seven hundred. That's the lady's bid. At four million seven hundred thousand. It's not yours, sir. Try fifty. It's here at four million seven. Against you, sir. It's in the room. It's the lady's bid at four million seven hundred thousand dollars. It's against you further back. It's against you, Mike, as well. At four million seven. You out, sir? At four million seven, ladies bid. I'm going to sell it this time. It's against you again, sir. Last chance. At four million seven hundred thousand dollars, madam. Thank you very much. Panel number two one two one. And thank you very much, sir, for your bids. And lot number three is the untitled number one from 1995. It's a minimal masterpiece, of course, by Agnes Martin. The first of two works in this evening's cell. Another one of Mrs. Fashionlandau's friends. This time, the later picture, 1995. Here in this wonderful. Square format, of course, fabulous work here. And I'm going to start the bidding here at, uh, at $3 million, at $3 million, $3 million, $100,000, at three one, three million two hundred thousand, three million three hundred thousand. It's bid on the telephone here at $3 million, three, three million four. I took it from you, Jose. Thank you, sir. $3 million, four hundred thousand. It's in the room against you now, David, at $3 million, four. Gentlemen's bid here at $3 million, four hundred thousand. Try five. At $3 million, four hundred thousand. It's your bid, sir, at $3 million, four. Still in the room at $3 million, four hundred thousand. Against you here at $3 million, four hundred thousand. At three million four, it's going to sell at three million four hundred thousand. Your bid, sir, at three four, three million four hundred fifty thousand. Thank you. At three million four fifty, three million five, three million five fifty now. Is that a bid, sir? Three million six. Thank you, madam. You're taking over. <laughs> at three million six, three million six fifty, three million seven, three million eight. Thank you. Let's try three million nine, three million nine, at three nine now. Four million, yes, sir. No, nope. at three million nine hundred thousand, still in the room here. At three million nine, I'll take fifty. At three million nine hundred thousand, the ladies' bid. At three million nine, make no mistake. At three million nine, there it is. Thank you, madam. At three million nine hundred thousand, and it's against the rest of you. It's against you here, David. It's against you in the room, sir. At three million nine hundred thousand, selling the work this time. At three million nine hundred thousand dollars. Thank you very much. Paddle number two one double three. Thank you so much. And lot number four is, of course, the Mark Tansy, a much look forward to moment here, the majestic triumph over mastery number two, acquired directly from the artist, and undoubtedly the most important work by Tansy ever to come to auction, much heralded. Jose is showing over there on this side. I can't see it. I hope you can. Wonderful, wonderful object. The first of two Tansies, of course, in the evening cell this evening. And I'm going to start the bidding here. 
hopefully with some interest, at $7 million. It's 7 million, 7 million 200,000 now, it's 7 million two, 7 million 500,000. At 7 million 500,000, 7 million 800,000 now. At 7 million 800,000 dollars, it's 7 million eight. At 7 million 800,000 dollars. At 7 million 800,000. At 7 million eight. 8 million 500,000, thank you very much indeed. At 8 million 500,000, with Courtney Kramer's at 8 million 500,000 dollars here. 8 million 600,000, in a new place with Jackie Walker at 8 million 600,000. Against you, Cordy, at 8 million 600,000. At 8 million six, it's against the pair of you now, 8 million 600,000. You're bidding on this side, Alejandra, 8 million 600,000 dollars. All on this side, 8 million six. It's on the telephones against the room here at 8 million 600,000. 8 million seven is in a new place. Alejandra, thank you very much indeed. At 8 million 700,000. We have a new bidder at 8 million 700,000. Alejandro Rossetti on this side of the bank at 8,700,000. It's against you further back at 8,700,000. You betting, madam, at 8,700,000. 8,700,000. It's here. It's against you both. It's against you, Courtney. It's against you, Jackie. At 8,700,000. On my left at 8,700,000. Let's try another one. Ottilie, we're coming in. 8,700,000. 8, 8,800,000. It's in another new place with Brad now at 8,700,000. 8, 8,800,000. I should say. Sorry. At 8,800,000. Brad's bitter, and against you all now at 8 million eight. There's four of you in it, at least, at 8 million eight. At 8 million nine, thank you, Ellie. At 8 million nine now, and against you, Brad, at 8 million nine. Let's make it nine million, please. At 8 million nine. Your bid, at eight nine. Nine million dollars. Could we try two? At nine million dollars. Say two, at nine million. Still here. Brad, it's your bid at $9 million now. On this side of the telephone against you, Cordy, still at $9 million now. And looking for $9,200,000. And it gets you in the room at $9 million. Are we saying C? What are we doing, Ali? At $9 million. $9 million one, I'll take. At $9,100,000. It's a fabulous thing. At $9,100,000. Try two, please, Brad. 9-1. Nine, 9-2 now, thank you, at 9,200,000. It's back with Brad Bentoff now at 9,200,000. I'm looking for three, please, Alejandra, from you. It's at 9,200,000 this time, at 9,200,000. There it is, 9,200,000. Want to try three? Is that a bid? No, wait. <laughs> Here with 9,200,000. It's Brad's bidder at 9,200,000. It's against you in the room at 9,200,000. 9,300,000. Thank you so much at 9,300,000. On my left again at 9,300,000. Say four. At 9,300,000. There it is, at 9,300,000. 9,400,000 is bid. Thank you, Brad. At 9,400,000. At 9,400,000. Say four. Here it is, at 9,400,000. Try five. At 9,400,000, it's Brad's bidder at 9,400,000. You want to say five? Maybe. Okay, that's what I want to hear. 9,400,000. Hmm? Here at 9,400,000. It's worth every penny. 9,500. Nine, nine, five. There it is. 9,500,000. Thank you. At 9,500. Brad, try six, please. At 9,500,000. 9,600,000. It's bid now. 9,600. Want to bid? 9,600,000. At 9,600,000. It's still here at 9,600,000 with Brad Bentoff at 9,600,000. It's against you on this side. What are we going to do? Are we leaving it this time? At 9,600,000. Thank you, Brad. It's with you. 9,700,000. Thank you. 9,7. Thank you, Ali. 9,7. 9,7. Here it is. 9,800,000. Want to give you one more? That's 9,800,000. Still with Brad Bentoff. It's against you in the room at 9,800,000 dollars here. At 9,8. You betting, madam? At 9,8. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9. 9,9
It's still with Brad Bent Bentoff here at $10 million. It's there at $10 million now. One more. Still with you, Brad, at $10 million. Alejandro, thank you so much. You're going to go on at $10 million here. What are we doing at $10 million? It's Brad's better here at $10 million. Want to try one? It's a lot of conferring at $10 million here. <laughs> here at $10 million. And it's still with Brad. Thank you, Brad. And selling it at $10 million now. Fair warning. Alejandro, we're coming in at $10 million now. What are we doing? At $10 million. Still with you, Brad. You sure? The hammer is coming up. I'm going to sell it this time. Fair warning now. It's Brad Spitter. Thank you all. And selling with a new auction record for the artist, Mark Tansy, at $10 million. Brad, it's yours. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's panel number 24. Thank you, Alejandro. And lot number five carries this on, of course, another great American uh, master, Glenn Ligon, this time untitled, I Lost My Voice, I Found My Voice, from 1991, as featured in Ligon's seminal retrospective at the Whitney Museum of American Art, a supremely rare example of his most important body of work, of course, the door paintings. Here is the painting, thank you so much indeed, showing on the turnstile for you, and I'm going to start the bidding here. At two million dollars now, two million, two million one hundred thousand, two million two hundred thousand, two million three hundred thousand now, two million three, two million four hundred thousand, at two million four, two million five, it's Charlotte's bid at two million five hundred thousand now, two million five hundred thousand, two million six hundred thousand now, two million six hundred thousand, two million seven hundred thousand, and it gets you now two million seven hundred thousand. You want to go on at two million seven? At two million seven, you sure? At two million seven hundred thousand, still here at two million seven hundred thousand. Charlotte's bid at two million seven hundred thousand. Anybody else at two million seven? It's with Charlotte van der Kerk at 2,700,000. It's against you, Caroline, at 2,700,000. At 2,700,000. Fair warning to you now, at 2,700,000. It's with you, Charlotte. I'm selling the painting. Here it is, at $2,700,000. It's still with you, at two seven. Fair warning now, and selling at 2,700,000. Charlotte, that's one to yours. Thank you. It's paddle 39 at 2,700,000. Oh, number six, of course, is the next. Brings us to the truly iconic work of American art, Jasper John's flag from 1986. Hanging right behind me, here it is, the wonderful double flag. This picture is one of just a small handful of iconic flag paintings remaining in private hands. And the first to appear at auction almost a decade. This fabulous painting here, the oil and encaustic wax on canvas, 1986. Signed and dated, of course, variously inscribed on the reverse. And I'm going to start the bidding here. At $30 million now, at $30 million, $31 million now, at $31 million, $32 million, $32 million now, at $32 million, $33 million now, at $33, $34 million, at $34 million now, at $34, at $34 million now, $35 million, thank you, Greg, at $35 million now, at $35 million, at $35, it's still with Gregoire, at $35 million now. At 35, $36 million, thank you. At $36 million now. At $36 million, and against you, Greg, at $36 million. $36 million now. Here at $36 million, say another one at $36, $37 million now. Thank you, Greg. At $37 million. Still with you, at $37 million now. Gregoire Beale, at $37 million. You sure? At $37 here at $37 million with Gregoire and selling at $37 million on this side at $37 million. Still with you, Greg, at $37 million. Want to come in, sir? At $37 million. And against you, Mike, at uh, $37 million. Here with Greg at $37 million. Any more at $37. At $37 million, it's Gregoire's bidder. I'm going to sell it at $37 million. Fair warning, Mike, and it's against you here. And it's against you here too also. At $37 million, it's here. Gregoire, it's your painting at $37 million. Thank you. It's yours. Panel number five, $37 million. And lot number seven is the, the Andy Warhol, the, uh, the shadow, bringing together two of the artist's most important motifs, the self-portrait and the shadow. From 1981, it's late work by Andy Warhol, of course. And I'm going to start the bidding here. 
At 1,500,000, 1,600,000, 1,700,000, 1,800,000, 1,900,000 is bid, sir. At 1,900,000, 2 million dollars here. 2 million one now. Say two. Thank you, David. At 2 million two. Say three, sir. 2 million 300,000. Against you both. At 2 million 300,000. Gentlemen's bid at 2 million three. And against you here in the room at 2 million three. Gentlemen seated at 2 million 300,000. You're coming in, David, at 2 three. 2 three. 2 four. Thank you, Wendy. At another new place. At 2 million four. 2 million 450 is your bid, sir. At 2 million 450. Say five. At 2 million 450. Against you here. It's the gentleman's bid at 2 million 450. And against you at 2 million 450. Give me 2 million five, please, Wendy. At 2 million 450,000. Gentleman's bid in the room at 2 450. At 2 million 450,000. David, are we going to go on at 2 million 450,000? At 2 million 450,000. Here it is. Gentleman's bid at 2 million 450. Thank you, sir. At 2 million 450. You want to come in? At 2 million 450,000. There it is. At 2 million 450. I'm going to sell it. At 2 million 450,000. When are we out? 2 million 450. Fair warning now. I'm going to sell it to five. Give me 50, sir. 2 million five. It's still on the telephone at 2 million 500,000. It's not yours, sir. At 2 million 500,000. Clears your bids as well, I think, David and Greg. And selling two million five hundred thousand dollars. Thank you, Wendy. It's yours. Panel number thirty-five. Thank you very much indeed. And lot number eight. Of course, we move on, and it is the second of the Agnes Martin paintings of this evening, the Great Stone, an exceptional, rare, early work example from nineteen eighty six sixty-one. I should say. I'm so sorry. A very early work with gold ground and blue. The Great Stone number two, as exhibited in multiple exhibitions, of course. Wonderful, wonderful painting. And I'm going to start the bidding here at $4 million, at $4 million, $4 million, $500,000, at $4 million, $500,000, $5 million now, at $5 million, $5 million, $500,000. Thank you, David. $6 million in several places, $6 million, five, seven million Ashcan, $7 million, $8 million I took from Ashcan, $8 million, five. is it another new place? At $8 million, $500,000, $9 million with Ashcan, $9 million, five. Here it is, the ladies bid in the room at $9,500,000. Ladies bid, here we are, at nine million five. You're bidding at the back, sir, with the iPhone torch, at nine million five hundred thousand. It's a new method of bidding. Ten million, it's at another new place, at ten million. Can we say five, at ten million? Gentlemen's bid at ten million dollars, at ten million five hundred thousand. It's against you, sir, say eleven. At ten million five, it's a ladies bid. Multiple bidders on the Actus Martin here, the early work, at ten million five hundred thousand, say eleven. At ten million five hundred thousand, still with the lady at ten million five. It's your bid, madam. It's against you further back now at 10 million 500,000. And it's cleared all the telephones at 10 million five. 10 million 750 is in another new place. Where is the bid at 11 million dollars? Thank you, sir. Another new place. It's already against you at 11 million dollars. I'll take 250. Multiple bidders, at least seven or eight of you at this point. 11 million 250. 11 250 is bid. Take five, sir. 11 five. The lady's back at 11 million five. Say 750, either of you. At 11 million 500,000. Brooke, you want to give me 750? At 11 million five. Ladies bid, 11 million 500,000. Sir. At 11 million, 11 million 750. Thank you, Brooke. At 11 million 750,000. 12 million dollars now. At 12. It's back with the lady again at 12 million dollars. 12 million 250,000. Thank you so much, Brooke. At 12 million 250,000. At 12 million 250, 12 million five is bid. It's back with the lady again at 12 million 500 thousand dollars. Looking for 750, Brooke, please, at 12 million 500 thousand. Still with you, madam, at 12 million 500 thousand. It's against you, sir, further back at 12 five. Give me 750. At 12 million five. At 12 million 500 thousand. Ladies bid. 12 million 750. Thank you, sir. At twelve million seven fifty. Thirteen million dollars now. Back with the lady at thirteen million dollars. Against you here, it's against you in two places here, it's against you at least three on this side. At thirteen million dollars. Brooke, not yours at thirteen. Nor yours, sir. Thirteen million two hundred and fifty thousand. Thank you. At thirteen two fifty. What a bid, sir? At 13 million 250. 13 five, thank you. Ladies bid at 13 million 500,000. 13 five. 
want to go on, sir? 13,500,000. Still with you, madam. 13,750,000. It's in another new place. Thank you, sir. At 13,750,000. Extraordinarily deep bidding on the early Agnes Martin here at 13,750,000. Great masterpiece of the work here. $14 million. And try 50, sir. 40 million and 50,000. I'll say one. Here at 14 million and 50,000. Gentlemen's bid at 14 million and 50,000. 14 million 100,000. Next bid's 150, sir. 14 1 against you. 14 150. Fourteen two. Fourteen five. Thank you very much. At fourteen million five hundred thousand dollars. Thank you, sir. At fourteen million five. Can we try six, madam, please? Here at fourteen million five hundred thousand dollars. It's a gentleman's bid at fourteen million five. Fourteen million five hundred and fifty thousand. Try six, sir. Fourteen million six. Fourteen million six fifty. Fourteen million seven. 40 million 750. 40 million 8. Yes? 40 million 850. $15 million. Madam, could we take it to one, please? At $15 million. Try one. Yes? 15 million 100,000. Fifteen two. At fifteen million two, there it is. Fifteen two. Gentleman's bid. Against you, madam, at fifteen million two. Fifteen million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Fifty million five hundred thousand. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Fifteen five. At fifteen million five hundred thousand. With the gentleman here, it's your bid, sir, of fifteen million five hundred thousand. Fifteen million six hundred thousand. Fifteen million seven hundred thousand. Try eight. At fifteen million seven. Still with you, sir. Fifteen million eight hundred thousand. 16, thank you. That's 16 million dollars. Have to take one, madam. At 16 million dollars. It's with the gentleman against you this time. It's 16 million dollars. Try one. At 16 million for the Martin. It's a seminal piece here. It's going to be difficult to find another one of this quality. It's 16 million dollars. It's with the gentleman. I think you know that. At $16 million. It's here at $16 million. I'm going to have to sell. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you to all of our bidders. But it's yours, sir. At $16 million. Come in again at one. At $16 million. Fair warning to you, madam. At $16 million. The hammer is coming up. At $16 million. Here it is with the gentleman. You want to say one more? No? Thank you, anyway. And selling. New auction record for the artist. Thank you very much, indeed. Panel number 2023. 20, How appropriate. Yours. Thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. And we move on, of course, the Alexander Calder here, the, uh, the red coma from 1962. Calder marked the very beginning of Emily Fisher Landau's journey. And this beautiful example has remained in her collection for over 30 years. Seminal early work, like the Albus, lot number one. Early residents in the wonderful Fisher Landau collection. I'm going to start the bidding here. At 1,100,000, 1,200,000, 1,300,000, now 1,300,000, 1,400,000, 1,500,000, 1,600,000, 1,700,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,800,000, 1,
Their warning at 1,700,000. Against you here, 1,700,000. Still with you, Jillian. And against you, Wendy, it's against you, Palmy. $1,700,000 here. Still with Julian Dawes. And selling here. Last chance to you, David, at 1700000 for the colder. I'm selling it here for $1,700,000. Thank you, Julian. One seven. It's paddle number 505. And ladies and gentlemen, of course, we come to the Emily Fisher Landau Picasso, a magnificent work hanging here to my right in all its glory. As we know, 1932 was Picasso's year of wonders, a year so important an entire museum exhibition has been dedicated to it. And of the many great works Picasso created that year, this work in particular stands out for its date, scale, subject, vibrancy and composition, all of which are exceptional. Acquired by Emily Fisher Landau in 1968, it has been the bedrock of her collection ever since. The first time ever at auction, in fact, the first time outside of her collection indeed, acquired in 1968 from Pace Gallery here in New York City. And I want to start the bidding here at $95 million, at $95 million, at $95 million, at $95, $95, $100 million now, at $100 million, at $100 million, $105 million, at $105 million, at $105 million now. $110 million. It's with you, Gregoire, at $110 million now. At $110 million. On my right here, $115 million. It's in a new place now with Wendy Lynn here, $115 million. Thank you, Wendy, at $115 million. It's your bid, $115 million. At $115 million. Here it is, on my left, at $115 million. And against you, Greg, at 115 million. Still with you, Wendy, now, 115 million dollars. 120 million dollars. Thank you, Gregoire. At 120 million dollars. Here on this side of the room, at 120 million dollars. At 120 million. You're going to come in here at 120 million. Still with you, Gregoire, at 120 million dollars now. At 120 million. At 120 million dollars. Still with you, Greg, at 120. That's against you, broker. One hundred twenty million dollars. That's against you, broker. One hundred twenty million dollars here. You bidding there at one twenty. One hundred twenty million dollars. Still on my right at one twenty. It's with you, Gregoire, at one twenty. For the moment, at one million twenty. At one hundred twenty million. There it is, at one twenty. Wendy. Let's try another one at one hundred twenty million. $120 million. Here it is, a 120. We Gregoire Beer, $121 million. Thank you very much indeed. In another new place, at 121. Brooke Lampley. Thank you, Brooke, at 121 million. It's your bid at $121 million. Here on my right. At $121 million. Greg, you want to go on at $121 million. At 121, there's three of you there, at $121 million. Wendy, give me another one, at $121 million. Thank you, Brooke, at $121 million. Against you, Greg, this time, at $121 million. Still with Brooke Lampley, Chairman of the Global Finance Division here at Sotheby's, at $121 million. Your bid, Brooke, at $121 million. Any more at $121 million. Want to bid, sir? At $121 million. It's here on my right, and it's against you, Wendy, and it's against you, Gregoire, for $121 million. Greg, coming in at $121 million. We're selling the picture at $121 million. Still with you on this side at $121 million. The hammer is coming up. Against you here, too, at $121 million. There it is. It's Brooke Spitter, Brooke Lampley. It's with you, ladies' bid, and against you, Greg, and against you, Wendy. Fair warning now. At $121 million for the Mary Therese, the Femme Lamont from 1932, here at Sotheby's, at $121 million. I'm selling the picture. Fair warning. Last chance for $121 million. Brooke, it's yours. Thank you very much. Panel number 36. Thank you. And we move on swiftly, of course, to lot number 11, the second Jasper Johns of the Evening Cell, a 1982 work depicting another of his signature motifs, 
the paintbrush-filled Savarin coffee tin. Here it is, showing on the easel. Thank you very much indeed. This time, executed 1982, the impressions number two out of two. And I'm starting the bidding here. At 700, 750,000, 800,000, 850,000 now, 850,000, 900,000. At 950,000 with David Galper, 950,000. Where's the bid? 960,000. Thank you, Lulu. Your bid at 960, fair enough. At 960,000. Is there another bid there, Vera? $1 million. Thank you very much indeed. $1 million now. Against you, David. Against you, Lulu. $1 million here. Vera's bid. Vera Alemani, here it is on the telephone at $1 million. Against you, Lulu. It's against you, David. Do you want to give me another one? At $1 million here for the Sovereign Tin. At $1 million on my left here at $1 million. At $1 million. We're selling it here. Fair warning. At $1 million. David, are you coming in? $1 million. Give me one one. At one million and fifty thousand. One fifty. One one. One one. It's bit. Thank you. Try fifty. At one million one hundred thousand. There it is on this side. At one million one hundred thousand. One million one fifty. At one million one hundred and fifty thousand. Try two, please, Vera. At one million one hundred and fifty thousand. One million two. It's bit. Thank you. At one million two. We're going to try 50. Champagne corks are going off at the back at 1 million two. <laughs> Thought we didn't notice. At 1 million 200,000. Here it is at 1 million two. Try 50. What a bid, sir? 1 million 250,000. 1, 250. No. At 1 million 250,000. It's back with the original bidder. Thank you, David. It's your bid and selling. Fair warning to you, sir, for 1 million 250,000. Thank you. It's panel number 19. Thank you very much. And lot number 12, of course, is the Robert Indiana, the four sixes, a gift from Indiana to his partner and studio assistant, Bill Katz, who was later to play a key role in Emily Fisher Landau's collecting journey. And we're starting the bidding here at $400,000, so $400,000, $450,000, $500,000, $550,000, 600000 600000 is bid here. It's against you, Wendy, at 600000 with David Rothschild here. At $600,000, try fifty. dollars At 600000 it's not yours. It's here on my right at $600,000. Still with David Rothschild at 600000 Thank you, David, representing Sotheby's Palm Beach. Well, everywhere, he's a man on the move. At $600,000. There he is, at $600,000. Thank you, sir. At $600,000. $650,000. At $650,000. David, give me seven. At six fifty. It's back with Wendy, chairman of Sotheby's Asia, of course. $650,000. Thank you, Wendy. It's $650,000. It's your bid at 650,000. It's against the Romans, against you also, David. At 650 on this side, try seven. At 650. At 650,000. David, you out? Shake of the head. And selling it here. It's Wendy's bid at last chance. And selling at $650,000. Thank you, Wendy. Panel number 35. Thank you. At lot number 13, we come, of course, to Ed Ruscha, the artist who perhaps featured most prominently in all of Emily Fesher Landau's collecting journey. His Securing the Last Letter, Boss, from 1964, is a seminal example of Ruscha's early text work and among the greatest of the artist's paintings ever to come to auction, of course, the subject of a major retrospective at MoMA in New York City as we speak. And I'm going to start the bidding here at $32 million now, $32 million. Thank you, Jose. I should have pointed out it's Hanging on the wall here. Thank you very much indeed. At $32 million. $32 million, $500,000. At $32 million, $5. $33 million. At $33 million now. At $33 million. $33 million, $500,000. At $33 million, $500,000. You want a bid, madam? At $33 million, $500,000. At $33 million, $500,000 now. For the Rouché, at $33 million, $5. At $33 million, $500,000. At thirty-three million five hundred thousand, on a bid. Thirty-three million five hundred thousand. Thirty-four million. Thank you, Brad. Thirty-four million. On Brad Bentoff's telephone, at thirty-four million dollars here, and I can sell at thirty-four million dollars. Your bid, Brad, at thirty-four million dollars. On a bid. It's at thirty-four million dollars. Still with you, Brad, at thirty-four million dollars. Your bid, thirty-four. At $34 million on the telephone here and selling at $34 million. Want to give me five? At $34 million. And try five, sir. 
at $34 million. It's Brad Bentoff's bid, and I can sell it here at $34 million. It's with you, Brad, and I'm going to sell it at $34 million. Fair warning now. The Roche is selling at $34 million. Thank you, Brad. It's with you and selling it. Fair warning. Last chance at $34 million. Thank you, Brad. Battle number 25. Congratulations. And lot number 14, of course, is the Andy Warhol, the second of the Andy Warhols, the poignant self-portrait from 1986, painted just months before his death. This is from a series of self-portraits that are considered among Warhol's last great artistic gestures, of course, exhibited and acquired from the last great commercial exhibition in London, from the Anthony Doffe Gallery. And I'm going to start the bidding here at $12 million, at $12 million, $13 million, $14 million now, at $14 million, at $14 million, at $14 million. $14 million now. $14 million. $16 million. Thank you, Lisa. At $16 million now. With Lisa Dennison at $16 million, I could sell a course at $16 million. At $16 million. For the Warhol, it's $16 million. It's with you, Lisa. For the Warhol, it's $16 million. Fair warning now. It's $16 million. Here it is. Against you on this side. Against you, Fergus. At $16 million. Thank you, Lisa. It's going to you. Fair warning. Hammer is up. Last chance. At $16 million. Thank you, Lisa. Panel number seven. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And we move, of course, to the, uh, the Robert Rauschenberg. One of Robert Rauschenberg's earliest works using the silkscreen technique, Sundog from 1962, is featured in several major exhibitions, including landmark surveys at the Whitney Museum of American Art, of course, filled with wonderful iconography, the swimmer and the aerial, the sun, the sky, the, the, the clouds there as well. And I want to start the bidding here at $3 million, at $3 million, $3 million, $3 million, $3 at $3 million, at $3 million, now $4 million with Jackie Wachter of $4 million now. At $4 million. Thank you, Jackie. It's with you at $4 million now. And selling at $4 million. With Jackie Walker at $4 million. And against you in the room, it's against the rest of the telephones. With you, Jackie, at $4 million. And selling against you, Alejandro, at $4 million. You want a bid? At $4 million. Not yours, Simon, either, at $4 million. On this side, I'm going to sell it. Jackie Walker, here she is, senior expert in contemporary, based in Los Angeles, part of the Walker family. There she is. Okay, that way around is it. I'm going to sell it here. At $4 million, fair warning, Jackie, it's yours. Paddle number 09, thank you so much. To you, thank you. And lot number 16, of course, we return to Roucher with his powerful Plenty Big Hotel Room, painting for the American, uh, marking one of the first times the artist introduces the potent motif of the American flag into his art. Fabulous picture here, great scale. 1985, and I'm going to start the bidding here. At four million, four million two hundred thousand, four million five hundred thousand, four million five. I take from you. Thank you very much indeed. You're big, Greg. At four million five, four million eight now. At four million eight, give me five. At four million eight hundred thousand dollars. At four million eight, five million dollars. Thank you so much. At five million dollars now. Want to come in again at five million? Five million two is bid. At five million two hundred thousand. For the Riche. At five million two, five million five hundred thousand now. At five million five, and it gets you here. At five million five hundred thousand. Thank you, Greg. At five million five hundred thousand, it's your bid. At five billion five, are you out? At five billion five hundred thousand, still with Gregoire Bio at five billion five, and against you too, sir. At five billion five, for the Rouche, the flag at five billion five hundred thousand dollars. At five billion five, and I'm going to sell it. Not yours either, sir. At five billion five hundred thousand. It's with Gregoire Bio, chairman of Contemporary Arts, Sotheby's North Americas. Hear it at five billion five, and I'm selling it to you, Greg. Thank you so much. At five billion five, there it is. Five zero three. Thank you. At five million five. And 17, of course, is next. Dating from 1968, this is the quintessential early example of Cy Twombly's revered blackboard paintings. Emily Fisher Lando acquired the painting from Twombly's friend and artistic collaborator Robert Rauschenberg in 1986. Indeed, it was exhibited at Leo Castelli Gallery here in New York in 1968. The wonderful Twombly painting, there it is, in all its beauty and splendor. Fabulous, fabulous thing. And I'm going to start the bidding here. At $16 million now, at $16 million. At $16 million, $17 million now, $18 million. Thank you, David, at $18 million, $19 million now, $20 million. It's back with you again at $20 million now, at $20 million. David's bidder at $20 million. Anyone else at $20 million? At $20 million, $21 million now, at 21 
at, here it is, at $21 million. Thank you so much, at 21. At 21, 22 million now. And it's not yours this time, but $22 million. It's back with David again at $22 million now. Not yours, at 22. It's with David Galperin at $22 million here. We can sell. 23 million, it's in another new place. Against you all at $23 million now. Against you here and against you, David, at, with Wendy again at $23 million. Deep bidding from Asia this evening at $23 million, as you can see, at 23. Here at 23, and against you, David, and against you there as well, 23. Give me another one, at 23. At $23 million. Still with you, Wendy, and I'm going to sell this time. David, come in again at $23 million. It's with you, Wendy. I'm selling it here at $23 million. David, are you out? Are we out of the room at $23 million here? It's with Wendy. The hammer is coming up for the Twombly, the 68 picture. Wonderful blackboard with this incredible harp motif. Very rare. There's only four of them out there. At $23 million. No? Wendy, it's going to be for you. Fair warning. At $23 million. Thank you very much. Paddle 435. Lot number 18, dating from 1938, indeed from London. Piet Mondrian's composition, Unfinished, is one of only five canvases executed during the artist's time in the city and one of his largest format works. Here it is. Thank you again for bringing it around. And I'm going to start the bidding here. At $6 million now. At $6 million. $6 million, $7 million now. At $7 million. $7 million, $500,000. At $7 million, $500,000. At $7 million, $500,000. At seven million five hundred thousand dollars now. Seven million five hundred thousand. At seven million five hundred thousand dollars. At seven million five hundred thousand. Want to come in, Aki? At seven million five. At seven million five. It's against you here. It's seven million five. <clears throat> Aki, you want to come in? At seven million five hundred thousand. At seven million five. You coming in? Eight million dollars. <laughs> Thank you very much. At eight million dollars with Aki now. At eight million dollars. Your bid, sir. At eight million dollars. And against you on this side, eight million dollars now. There it is, at eight million dollars. At eight million. Against you, Julian, at eight million dollars out. Aki's bidder at eight million dollars. And against you in the room there at eight million dollars. Fair warning. And selling. Thank you, Aki. At eight million dollars. Thank you very much indeed, sir. It's panel number eight. Four eight. And lot number nineteen is uh, where we come to Jean Arps. Tours Végétale from 1959. This one ex uh, example cast by Georges Rudier on the 4th of October 1961. Number two from five, showing on the screens. And I'm going to start the bidding here. At $600,000, $600,000, $650,000, $700,000, $750,000, $800,000, $900,000, $900,000, $900,000, $900,000, $900,000, $900,000, $900,000, $900,000, $900,000, $900,000, $900,000, $900,000, $900,000, $900,000
on the telephone here at $19 million. Thank you, Wendy. It's your bid at $19 million. And selling at $19 million. Back with Wendy again from our Sotheby's Asia. $19 million representing the Asian clients this evening. $19 million. Thank you, Wendy. It's your bid. And I'm going to sell at $19 million. What a bid. $19 million. Still with you, Wendy. I'm selling it here. Fair warning. It's against you further back, sir. Last chance. Ladies bid. Here on the telephone. Thank you, Wendy. It's yours at $19 million. Thank you very much. Paddle number 535 for $19 million. And lot number 21, Ed Rusch's Mint Green. The painting belongs to a small group of works the artist created between 1966 and 1969 in which the text is liquid or wet. Most of these are now museum collections, making this example an incredibly rare opportunity to market. 1968, and I'm starting the bidding here at $8 million, sir. So $8 million, $8 million, $500,000, 8 million, five, nine million now at $9 million, $9 million, $500,000. At nine million five. Ten million dollars. Thank you, Alex. At ten million. It's your bid. At ten million dollars now. At ten million. Eleven million dollars. Thank you, Claudia. At eleven million now. Against you, Alex, at eleven million. It's here with Claudia at work. At eleven million dollars. On this side. Thank you, Claudia. At eleven. And against you, Alex, here at eleven million dollars. With Claudia at eleven million dollars. And against you in the room, sir. At eleven million dollars. On the telephone here. With Claudia. Against you, Alex. I'm selling it on this side for the moment at $11 million. Barmy, we're going to come in at $11 million. At $11 million. You want to give me five. At $11 million. It's still on this side. Against you, Alex. And against you, Barmy. Thank you very much indeed. I'm going to sell it here. Claudia's bid. At $11 million. Last chance. And selling at $11 million. Thank you very much. It's panel number nine. Thank you, Claudia. And lot number 22, the next work, of course, by Mark Tansy, this time installing the lens of 1993. And I want to start the bidding here at, um, at $2 million, $2 million, $2 million, $500,000, $3 million now, $3 million, $500,000 now, at $3 million, $500,000, $4 million. Thank you, David, at $4 million now. It's your bid, $4 million. At $4 million, with David Schrader at $4 million. For the Tansy at $4 million. And against you there, sir, at $4 million. <clears throat> Fabulous artist at $4 million. It's your bid. I'm going to sell at $4 million. Seems a good buy, David, in light of the other picture at $4 million. Still with you, sir, at $4 million. Fair warning to you at $4 million. I'm going to sell it on a telephone here with David Schrader at $4 million. Fair warning. And against you on this side at $4 million. <laughs> David, it's yours. Thank you. It's panel number 28. <clears throat> And lot number 23 is the uh, William de Kooning, the sumptuous and title number 15 from the final decade of the artist's production. Fabulous painting here. Memorably installed, of course, Emily Fisher Landau's homes, this time from 1983. <clears throat> fabulous, fabulous painting. And I'm going to start the bidding here at, um, at $5 million now, at $5 million, $5 million now, 5 two. at $5 million two. Five million five hundred thousand. It's Helena's bid at $5 million, five. Five million eight hundred thousand now. Five million eight hundred thousand. It's against you, Helena. Six million dollars now. With Helena, it's six million dollars. Thank you, Helena. It's six million dollars. Anybody else? It's six million dollars now. Still your bidder. It's six million dollars. Alex, you want to come in? It's six million two hundred thousand. Thank you, Alex. It's six million two. And against you, Helena. It's six million two hundred thousand. Give me five. At six million two hundred thousand. Still with Alex. Six two. Six million five, sir. Six four, I'll take four from you, sir. It's six million four hundred thousand. I'm gonna try six, Alex. It's six million four hundred thousand. Six million six hundred thousand. Six million eight hundred thousand is bid now. At six eight, seven million dollars now. Gentlemen on the telephone there, it's seven million dollars. And against you, sir, it's seven million dollars. With Alex Branchick this time, it's seven million dollars. Give me two. At seven million two, seven million dollars. On this side, it's seven million dollars. Still with Alex Branchick. At seven million dollars. Against you in the room, it's seven million. Still with you, Alex, and against you, Helena, it's seven million dollars now. It's Alex Project's bit of three of you in it. At seven million dollars, fair warning, sir, you out. At seven million dollars with Alex Branchick. Thank you, Alex. It's seven million dollars. It's here and selling on the telephones. Final, final warning, sir. Seven million to fifty. Thank you. Sorry, seven million and fifty. <laughs> 
I'll get there eventually. 7,050,000. Try one. 7,100,000. Against you, sir. It's 7,100,000. Give me 50. That's 7,100,000. Good picture, sir. That's 7,100,000. Want to try 50? No? That's 7,100,000. It's here with Alex Branchick. 7,150,000. It's gone on. It's 7,150,000. Want to try two? Seven million two now. No? And it gets you still, sir, further back at seven million two. There it is. Want to throw in another 50? At seven million two hundred thousand. It's going to the telephone at seven million two hundred thousand. It's back with Alex Branchick. Against you here. It's against you further back. It's against you, Helena. It's going with you, Alex. Four of you in it this time. At seven million two hundred thousand. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Panel number 46 at seven million two. And lot number 24 is the, uh, the Ellsworth Kelly, uh, this time the black white from 1970. And I'm going to start the bidding here at uh, 1,200,000, 1,400,000, 1,600,000 now, 1,600,000, 1,800,000. Thank you, Jackie. At 1,800,000, it's on this side. And selling with Jackie Walker at $1,800,000. It's with you, Jackie. It's against the room. It's against you on this side of the telephone banks. And I'm going to selling the picture at 1,800,000. Fair warning, at 1,800,000. Thank you, Jackie. One eight, panel number 56. And 25 is next, the Richard Prince. We have, of course, for your delectation, my first girl from Richard Prince's iconic joke series from 1989. And I'm starting the bidding here at 1 million two, 1 million four, 1 million 600,000 now, 1 million 600,000. At 1 million 600,000 dollars. 1 million 800,000. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Greg. At 1 million 800,000. On this side, at 1,800,000, it's against you, David Garapin, at 1,800,000. At 1,800,000, here at 1,800,000. And selling. At 1,800,000. At $1,800,000, thank you, sir. It's a 1,800,000. And selling, fair warning, at $1,800,000. Thank you, Greg. Paddle 53. And 26 is the Rauschenberg, the vitamin. The groundbreaking uh, work, of course, from the Combine ser series, titled Vitamin and Acquired directly from the artist by Emily Fisher Landau. Of course, the artist featuring at least twice this evening and the owner of the, the Twombly painting. At uh, this time, I'm going to start the bidding here at 2,600,000, 2,700,000, 2,800,000 now, 2,800,000, 2,900,000, 3 million dollars now with Barmy at 3 million dollars. Barmy Fierro March at 3 million dollars on this telephone and selling at 3 million dollars. At $3 million. Thank you, Barmy. I'm selling it here at $3 million. Fair warning. It's your bid, sir, for $3 million. Thank you. Panel number 38. And the Friends Klein, the untitled 1959. Coming around for you. Lot number 27, of course, is the uh, wonderful early painting. There it is. Thank you so much. The Abex work from 1959. And starting the bidding here. At, um, at $2,200,000. So $2,200,000, 2600000 now, $2,600,000, $2,800,000. At $2,800,000, $3 million now with David Galperin at three. It's your bid, David, at $3 million. And Selly at $3 million. $3 million. Thank you, David. It's with you, the Franz Klein. And selling, last chance, for $3 million. Thank you. Sold. Paddle number 10. And lot number 28, next to the works by George O'Keefe, this time the Dry Waterfall from 1951, A Vision of America, the American West, Dry Waterfall, another painting acquired directly by Emily Fisherlander from the artist. And I'm going to start the bidding here at $800,000, at $800,000, $850,000, 900000 now, at $900,000, at $900,000 now, at $900,000, any more, $900,000. At $900,000. That's all right. Take your time. At $900,000. $950,000 is bid there. In the meantime, at $950,000. It's with Peter Cloman at $950,000. Your bid, Peter. At $950,000. Give me a million. At $950,000. Still with you, Peter. At $950,000. Thank you so much. At nine hundred and fifty dollars on this side. When did we got the bidder? At nine hundred and fifty thousand, still with Peter Cloman. Here he is, nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and looking for a million dollars here from you. At nine hundred and fifty thousand. At nine hundred and fifty thousand on this side. At nine hundred and fifty thousand. 
950. Is that ringing? At $950,000. Give me a million. At $950,000. How are we doing? At $950,000. Anybody else want to come in? At $950,000. Is that a bid? No, nope, it's just a hold. <laughs> Peter, thank you very much indeed for your patience here. At $950,000. Anybody in the room? At $950,000. What a bid, sir? At nine fifty. dollars at 950,000. We got the room, we got the telephone back on again. Here it is at 950,000. Thank you, Peter, at 950. Yes, $1 million. Thank you very much indeed. At $1 million. Here it is at 1 million. Give me one one. At $1 million. Thank you, Wendy. 1 million 100,000 is bid against you now. One one. At 1 million one. At 1 million 100,000. Peter's bid at 1 two is bid now. One, two, one, three. One, four. One, five. And one million five. Wendy, give me six. One six, thank you so much. One million six. One million seven hundred thousand now. It's Peter's bidder again at one million seven hundred thousand dollars. Peter Cloman, here he is. Thank you, Peter. One million eight is bid. At one eight. One million eight. At one million eight. One nine. One nine. Two million. Is that a bid? <laughs> Getting prematurely carried away there. One million nine. Two million dollars is bid now. Thank you. At two million. Peter. Is it two million dollars? On my left hand side, at two million dollars here. You want to go to two million two? Here it is at two million dollars. For the O'Keefe for two million dollars. Try another one at two million dollars. Still with Wendy Spitter at $2 million here on my left. Not yours, sir. At $2 million here. Fair warning, it's with Wendy this time. At $2 million, you out, sir. At $2 million, I'm going to sell it on this time. At $2 million, here it is for the O'Keefe. Fair warning to you. Last chance. And selling at $2 million. <laughs> Wendy, it's yours. Panel number one, thank you. At $2 million. And we have lot number 29, the uh, De Buffet. From 1950, of course, here it is. Gombar a la Rose from 1950, and I want to start the bidding here at um, a two million three, two million four hundred thousand, two million five, two million six hundred thousand dollars now, two million six, two million seven hundred thousand. With Julian Dawes here, two million seven hundred thousand, and selling at two million seven. It's with you, Julian, at two million seven hundred thousand. Anyone else at two million seven? With Julian Dawes at two million seven hundred thousand, selling the work. Here it is. Fair warning at two million seven hundred thousand dollars. Thank you, Julian. Two seven. It's panel number five zero five. And number 30 is next, the Leger, L'Etoile Rouge, one of the very few old paintings from the artist's seminal Les Plongeurs series to have remained in private hands, of course, exhibited here at the Guggenheim Museum's fabulous picture, 1942. And I'm going to start the painting here at um, $850,000. Now at $950,000. One million dollars. At one million dollars. At one million dollars. At one million dollars. One million one hundred thousand. Thank you. Allegra is bidder at $1,100,000. Here it is, at $1,100,000. So with you, Allegra, at $1,100,000. And against you, Ashcan, at $1,100,000. It's Allegra is bidder at $1,100,000. You're coming in, sir, at $1,100,000. For the penultimate lot, here it is, at $1,100,000. For the leisure, at $1,100,000. Still on the telephone with Allegra. I'm going to sell the work at $1,100,000. Fair warning to you all, last chance. And selling against you, Ashcan, at $1,100,000. Thank you, Allegra. Number 507. And we move on, of course, to the very last lot. Here it is, Andy Warhol's portrait of Emily Fisher Landau, an enduring tribute to Emily Fisher Landau's legacy as a beloved patron of the arts. One of two different uh, portraits painted by the artist. This one, of course, we're thrilled to be selling from 1982. And I want to start the bidding here 
at $300,000, $300,000, $350,000, $400,000 out, 400000 450000 at $450,000, $500,000. Thank you, Alex. It's your bid at $500,000. And selling at $500,000. It's with Alex Branchik. It's against the room. It's against you on this side of the telephones. It's with Alex Branchik to end this historic sale at $500,000, 100% sold with Alex Branchik. Selling to you, sir. Last chance. The hammer is up and selling at $500,000. This concludes the evening sale at Sotheby's of Emily Fisher Landau's collection. Alex yours. Thank you very much indeed. Paddle number 31. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining us this evening. Whether in person or remotely, the story of Emily Fisher Landau's collection is far from over. It will continue tomorrow at 11 a.m. with our day sale and will continue beyond that through a series of sales this December here in New York in which we'll offer iconic pieces of furniture by Emily Fisher Landau's favorite designer, Warren MacArthur, as well as contemporary paintings and sculpture. In the meantime, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow and again next week for the marquee sales of modern and contemporary art. Good night. Thank you. <laughs>